Okay, well, it is a beautiful sunny day here in Niagara Falls, Ontario, which is a complete different scenario from yesterday, which we had almost two feet of snow dumped on top of us here. You can see the street still hasn't been plowed yet, so we can't go anywhere. But the snow blowers are still rocking. I was out earlier today cleaning some things up. Uh, I got some footage, some high speed footage of me plowing yesterday. It was incredible. I spent almost six hours plowing snow. But this also gives me an opportunity to work on the DR650. Because I can't get out of the driveway, well, I might as well work in the tinker shed. So why don't we get to work on that airbox modification that I talked about when I, uh, when I put the jet kit in. And I think uh, today's a good day for it. So let's get in the shed, get the heat on, and get working on that project today on Dino's Tinker Shed. The goal here is to get a big enough space in this door to let air through for the jet kit. So I don't want to cut the main door, but I do need to get some airflow through here. So what I'll do is I'll make a second door out of aluminum. Now I'll cut the center out here and that'll leave this outer ring. Now to get that center out, I'm going to use this hole saw in the corner. So that means I can use my jigsaw to cut in between the holes. So I'll start with a pilot hole. And basically, I just eyeball this sort of, you know, three-eighths of an inch out from the center of the hole kind of thing. And this will give me that pilot hole for the hole saw itself to follow. And I'll just kind of drill through like this and open up the corners. I'll follow this with my jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. And I hold the metal to the shoe. You can kind of see me reach around the back there. Make sure you're behind the blade if you're going to do this. But uh, I cut with a very slow stroke and it basically does a really good job of cutting through this aluminum. And here's the center section cut out. Now I'm just going to clean this up while it's still part of the bigger piece of aluminum. I'll use my roto lock head on my die grinder here to clean this up. And I'll come in as well afterwards with a small rotary tool and a sanding drum. And what this will do is it'll allow me to clean up all the corners and get everything nice and smooth and, and uh, more professional looking. Once this is done, I'll just follow the outside contour of the, uh, the door shape like this. And again, this metal cutting blade works really easy and, and basically does a great job. I just cut this little tip off the end here too. Now once I get this done, I'm going to get this sticker off this plastic. This is an old sign that I had kicking around. So I'll clean off the majority of the plastic and uh, get it down to the bare aluminum. This takes a bit of work. It's pretty sticky glue and, it, and I can't get all the residue off. So after I sand this, it looks pretty decent, but like I said, it's still got all of this adhesive on it, so I'll have to take care of that. The way I do that was a little bit of acetone on a giant Q-tip, basically. I, I buy these in bulk, but they work really well for this. I've got a nice uh, wooden shaft in them, and it allows you to kind of scrub and lift off all the particles. So you can see the outside I haven't sanded yet. I'll do that after I get all the adhesive off. But basically, I just run around with this giant Q-tip and scrub off all the adhesive here. Now, I've sanded the outside. I'm going to come back in and just remark the center hole or the centers of each of the holes for the mounting bolts. I'll just use a, a felt tip marker here. Looks pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll just center punch those so that it gives a nice easy spot for these to drill. Once that's done, I'll just clamp it in my vise 
and I'll chase those holes out with a uh, with a drill bit. And finally, I'll follow that up with a chamfering tool just to make sure that the you know the bolt holes don't have any sharp edges on it or anything like that. It's looking pretty good. Don't forget the back side. And I'm just going to dry fit it here to make sure my holes were in the right position. So I'll screw this in. And you can see it, it does give a generous amount of airflow to the main air box. I think this is going to work pretty well. Yeah, I like it. The holes line up well. I like the look of it. I think it'll do good. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got the outside indicated with that small O. And the next thing we're going to do is put a little bit of Velcro on this in preparation for this filter cloth that I've got here. Okay, so what I'm going to use to cover that gaping hole in that piece of aluminum is this stuff, this Outerwear's pre-filter sheet. Now this is a cloth-like material, very, very fine, that's not supposed to impact airflow across it. And they use this in sand buggies, snowmobiles, even uh, jet skis and stuff can use it because it's actually water repellent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch a piece across that opening. I'll pull the adhesive off the back of the uh, Velcro strips and press it on there. And I'm hoping it will adhere to this stuff. I'm really not sure if it will or not. But what that will do is basically give us a pre-filter at the side of the air box. So it shouldn't restrict airflow all that much, um, but it'll still give me some protection from sand and dirt that may enter the, the actual air box itself. So let's see if this stuff will work. Okay, let's do it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use this hook and loop fastener, this self-adhesive fastener. So I'll cut rough sizes out and I'm gonna stick it to the inside of the frame. That's why I marked it with an O so I knew what the outside was. And I'll just trim it around so that it matches the frame both inside and outside. So this, on, on the actual frame itself, I stuck I think the, the hook, the one that grabs, and then I follow this up by applying the fuzzy stuff directly to that and trimming it in a very similar fashion. I basically wanted it to match the profile of that frame as close as I could. So I'll just go around here and I'll just trim it up. Now, the actual fabric that I'm gonna apply is pretty neat stuff here. It comes in a sheet of about 12 by 12 inches or 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And it's basically like super, super fine um, win window screen, basically. So I'll lay it down here and I'll cut the rough size out. And uh, this stuff's pretty neat. It's even even uh, water resistant. Water can't penetrate through this stuff, which is which is pretty cool. It beads on there like wax. So now the guy with no thumbnails is going to try and peel off the adhesive backing here. So I'll get that off and then... I'm going to stretch this fabric tight as I push it down onto the adhesive and it sticks really good on here. I was very, very pleased with how good the adhesive was on this hook and loop stuff. And I'll stretch it as best I can. I could have got a little bit better here, but overall I was, I was pleased with it. Then I'll follow this up and just run around here with the razor knife again. And I got smart this time and actually got my cutting mat out and just followed it around so that it matches the frame. Now you only cut the outside on this. You want the fabric to stay in that hole, obviously, and cutting the little holes out for the screw heads were really hard. It was probably the hardest part to do, but I did get it. And now I'm gonna peel this off. And this is the beauty of it, is you can take this off and wash it or make a new filter the same exact way. So, you know, it's a very flexible thing and you don't have to discard the, the aluminum. And uh, I'll paint this. I don't normally paint in my shed, but I just laid down some compost bags and painted away here, put a couple coats on. I think it looks pretty good. And I'll follow this up by putting the filter back on. So I'll line one of the holes up and stretch it across to the other hole and then just use my thumb to smooth things out. And, and it goes back on really well, you can see here. 
The last thing I want to do is put on some foam gasket. So this is basically just the stuff you'd use on weather stripping. It's about 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch wide. And I follow this up the same way by going around and uh, ad adhering it. Now, the self-adhesive that came with this stuff wasn't really that good. So I ended up having to bring it downstairs and glue each piece on with my hot glue gun. And that seemed to work pretty well. Um, I think overall I got a decent fit that I was satisfied with. And um, once trimmed up, I think it looks pretty good. It definitely sealed really, really well on the air box. Um, when I tightened it on here, um, it, I just sort of went around and tightened the screw heads up a little bit at a time until it settled in. And I was very, very pleased. And overall, I think it looks really good. Why don't you have a look yourselves? Okay, that about wraps up today's episode on building an airbox pre-filter modification for your DR650. Now, again, we did this so that the ProCycle Jet Kit can get the airflow it needs, and I think this is gonna work out great. It seals really tight. Uh, I don't see how any dirt can get past it, and the fabric that I used is even water repellent. I can't believe it. It looks like it's gonna work really, really well. So until next time, I hope that you get out into your shop or into your garage or down in your basement and you get to spin some wrenches yourself because man, at least here, it's cold and it's fun to do. So I hope you get to do that. But until then, I'm Dino. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon again here on Dino's Tinker Shed. Three months before I can get out. Crazy but I do like winter. <laughs> <laughs>